Hello and welcome back, I'm Carl Murawski. This is the channel that helps you own less and own better. This is the third installment in what's become an annual tradition that's called the flannel shirt guide. And honestly, it's less, it's less of a guide and more of me showing you the cool flannel shirts that I've found throughout the past year so that you might, you know, pick one up for yourself or at least to give you some data points as to what you might like. But let's get right down to business. Let's get into what makes a great flannel shirt. The definition of a flannel shirt is pretty broad. Since flannel fabric can be cotton, wool, or even blended with other synthetic materials, it can be brushed or unbrushed, patterned or solid, and you'll even see in this lineup that there's a broad definition of a flannel shirt. The ways to tell a high quality flannel shirt is by first looking at the fabric. Wool is always best, but some people have sensitive skin, so sometimes cotton is a better alternative for them. If your shirt is patterned, look for yarn dyeing, where the individual yarns that make up the pattern are all of different colors. This not only allows a cleaner and more intricate design, but also ensures that your shirt will fade and wear in a way that looks better with time. Depending on your usage, single, double, and triple needle stitching will be preferred, or ideally a combination of the three. Triple needle, where the shirt sees a lot of stress like the shoulders and the back yoke. Double or single needle, where flexibility is desired. The thread should also be of a complementary color if it's meant to stand out, or the same color if it's meant to blend in. The buttons, if it has them, should be of high quality as well, and sewn to the shirt securely. If your shirt has snaps, they should be of high quality and feel secure when fastened. Turn the shirt inside out where a lot of sins are typically hidden. The seams should be cleanly finished and the workmanship should be of a high standard. Finally, if your shirt has a pattern, make sure that the pattern is matched where the shirt is sewn together. Sometimes brands will rotate the fabric to create different effects, but whichever choice they've made, it should be executed in an intentional way, not haphazardly or cut from random sections of fabric. Let's begin with this. This is the Pendleton board shirt. And in the three years that I've been doing this, this has been the most requested shirt, so I figured it really makes sense to start off with this one right here. People love them, and they've always asked, how could you have a flannel shirt guide without the Pendleton board shirt? Well, calm down, because it's here now. Now, this is about as legendary as it gets for a shirt, and on the West Coast during the 1960s, these were extremely popular among surfers since catching those early morning waves can get a little chilly. Heck, even the Beach Boys were originally named the Pendletones and could be seen wearing this iconic patterned wool shirt on some album covers. The version I have here is the board shirt in brown bronze ombre plaid, and it's made from Pendleton's washable wool sourced in Oregon. It has a straight hem, so don't bother trying to tuck this thing in, a very nice medium weight, and it's warmer than I expected it to be. Prices on the board shirt vary, but expect to pay anywhere between $120 and $180. Now, believe it or not, we're not gonna stick around here today. We're gonna go get breakfast at a great place that I like down the road called Toasted Oat. So let's hop in the truck and get some. Man, okay, well, this is a flannel from a new company to me, Musk Ox. And it definitely, it's very thick. It's very burly. I like the colors of it. This is called the Grand Flannel. Musk Ox does a couple of interesting things as a company. You get free shipping and returns. There's a $10 off code on your first flannel. And they also donate $10 to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center for every flannel sold. As a shirt, it's pretty basic with a typical layout, nothing gimmicky or strange, just a solid feeling, cozy flannel. I think their real appeal is in some of the interesting colors and patterns that they offer, like the burgundy grand flannel, but they also have some shirt jacks, just in case you wanna bump up the warmth. In terms of construction, everything is pretty average, which makes me wonder why the price is so high. If interesting colors and patterns are your thing, though, Musk Ox has them. Oh, come on. Now, the Amazon Essentials is a very reasonably priced flannel for $27. And I hear you guys a lot. You want more affordable options. I totally get it. 27 bucks is a steal for this flannel. It's very, very nice. $200, $300 for a shirt is pretty outrageous. I get it. Of course, the details aren't as nice. The fabric is decent, but nothing special. But for a good, basic, good looking flannel, the Amazon Essentials are a solid value. They also come in a ton of different colors and patterns. And let's face it, 90% of guys just want a flannel shirt that's warm and comfortable without fitting like a box. These will be perfect for that. Reading through the reviews, it does appear that these shrink quite a bit once you put them in the dryer, so be sure to hang dry them if you can. My one complaint about these shirts is that the buttons are just a little too small for this type of fabric, so occasionally they pop open.
damn, it's just what I thought. This is the plaid for fireside flannel. These things will stop your motor like there's no tomorrow, but they definitely keep you warm. Now this is a brand that I did a whole video about a few months ago called Pladra, and this is their fireside flannel, which is a new heavyweight fabric for them at 11.6 ounces. It has this really cool yarn texture made in Portugal, and all of their plaids are designed in house. This particular colorway is called Woodland Green, and it's entirely unbrushed, so it feels really tough and durable. Pladra shirts, have some great details like triple stitched seams, perfectly matched panels, and the neat wildlife print inside the cuffs, yoke, and under the collar. The fireside flannel could be yours for $148. See, the iron heart flannel. Now, this is the most expensive of the bunch. That being said, a lot of people feel like this is the absolute pinnacle of flannel performance. Yes, the Ironheart Ultra Heavy Flannel Green Tartan Check in Western Cut. Last year, I expressed my interest in finally getting an Ironheart Ultra Heavy Flannel. Why did it take me several years to get one? Well, for starters, they're about 350 bucks for a shirt. Now, I have no problem spending money on things that'll last forever, but that's a little too much money for a shirt, in my opinion. Regardless, I picked one up and it really is quite something. This is definitely heavyweight at 12 ounces, and the finishing is just exquisite overall. The pattern and colors are crisp and vibrant. The double brushed interior is wonderfully soft, and the snaps are some of the best I've ever felt. That being said, I think this is a clear example of diminishing return. Made in Japan, it's among the best in our lineup today, but it's not three times the shirt that the Pendleton or Pladra is, it's just not. Now, if you have a minimalist wardrobe and can afford to only buy a few items and they've all gotta be the best quality, yeah, this could be my recommendation, I could see that. This shirt is in their Western cut, which is a bit slimmer than their work shirt cut. Typically, they'll offer both styles in the same fabric with the work shirt having buttons instead of snaps and a slightly more generous fit overall. Just be aware that this is a Japanese cut, which is much slimmer than the Western fits. That price though. Damn it. You know, as much as I like toasted oat, they do this every single time. Look, it's the UES flannel. UES, the heavy flannel shirt in blue for $178. This is 14 and a half ounce cotton. This one was a new brand to me, but recommended by my buddy Jake over at Almost Vintage Style. This flannel has a lot of the same qualities of the Iron Heart and Flathead models, but for half the price. It's made in Japan and still has cool details like ivory palm nut buttons. Fun fact, old US military outfits also had palm nut buttons. Double chain stitched main seams and fabric that's full of character, but without the name recognition and price of the bigger brands. The fit is slimmer, but not as slim as the Ironheart or Flathead, so you get a little more room to layer or if you're just a bigger guy like me. The fabric is woven on old shuttle looms in Okayama, and while the outside has a hard and almost rough texture, the inside is brushed for comfort. Yarn dyed, of course, and it should age beautifully. I only wish that this brand had more colors available. You can't win them all. Well, would you look at that? It's the flathead flannel. Look at this guy. Now, somewhere in the same stratosphere as the Iron Heart is the Flathead. Comparing these two is like comparing the Japanese versions of Ferrari and Lamborghini. This is slightly less expensive at about $295, but still way too much money for a shirt in my opinion. Some of the differences with this model compared to the Iron Heart is the much larger neck, which is lined in cotton drill fabric, and the fact that their Western style shirt features buttons rather than snaps. Other than that, it's very similar in overall feel, being thick and soft with that typical Japanese cut, which I've just kind of accepted doesn't work for my body type with long skinny arms and an overall trim silhouette. The flathead doesn't give up much to the Ironheart shirt though. And if I were to choose between the two, I'd save the 60 bucks and go with the flathead. Now, finally, the shirt that I'm wearing right here is another very highly requested model. And I'm gonna try to pronounce it correctly. I believe it's Fjallraven, Fjallraven? 
I'm not really sure, but either way, it's great. This is the Singi Heavy Flannel in Deep Red. This is 100% cotton flannel, which comes in at 440 grams, or just about 15 ounces, and it features G1000 reinforcements inside the collar, cuffs, and pocket flaps. I like this flannel a lot because it reminds me a ton of the workwear that I wear all day, except this one is more refined. There's neat little straps which make the sleeves easy to keep rolled up, and I find that this fit is much more suited to my body type than most of the Japanese shirts that I've shown you. This shirt seems ready for adventure, and Fial Raven is a brand that I'm definitely gonna dig into more. Now this isn't a cheap shirt either at $110, and I'm kinda surprised to find out that it was made in Vietnam. That being said, the fit is really good. It seems to be built very well. I like a lot of things about it. As a matter of fact, I'd venture to say that this might be my favorite of the bunch that I've shown you today. Even though there are brands that uh, have shirts that are three times as much, there's ones that are much cheaper. But I think this is a good middle of, middle of the road. The fit is fantastic, especially for somebody like me. It's full of thoughtful little features. Well, that wraps up the third annual flannel shirt guide. The 2022 is in the books. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you especially to my patrons. It's because of you that I'm able to do videos like this. So thank you especially. And I'll catch you guys next time.